Salutations, respected viewers. I am George from Ireland. I'm in the Arthur Conan Doyle Center in um, Edinburgh. So Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was, um, was born here um, in Edinburgh, not in this exact house. And um, he qualified as a doctor at Edinburgh University, been to Stonyhurst College. He was a man of Irish Catholic extraction. He didn't particularly identify with the Catholic community in Great Britain and didn't have the political opinions that uh, most Irish Catholics did. He went to Stonyhurst College, a Catholic school, uh, the really famous old boy. Anyway, so um, as well as his medical practice, he was better known for his, uh, better for writing his novels, inventing Sherlock Holmes, that's a sleuth hound of legend. Um, so uh, Conan Doyle, he was also an enthusiast of spiritualism, something which is not widely um, understood. That is to say, he believed that mediums could hold a seance and could contact the dead, as in a seance can just be like the French word for meeting. Um, uh, so despite this scientific background, he had this uh, apparently irrational belief. And it was, it was at the height of the popularity uh, just after the First World War because so many teenage soldiers had gone to their deaths and for um, grieving parents, it's very difficult to accept that there was no contact from the other side. So there were many spiritualists who would speak to people and claim they could contact their son in the next world or occasionally their daughter. Um, and some people dislike this, like Houdini felt they were preying on the grief of vulnerable people and exploiting the bereaved. And they were just conning them. Um, Kondorp was a friend of Harry Houdini, but they fell out over this because Houdini believed it was absolute nonsense um, because he, he used to go to mediums and try and expose them as hoaxers, as in saying, I want to speak to my mother who died some years ago. And these American spiritualists speaking to Houdini, supposedly on behalf of his mother in English. And he said his mother spoke scarcely a word of English, spoke to him either, either in Hungarian or Yiddish. So he said he knew that he was being um, played for a monkey. So he didn't like being had for a fool and would um, expose them and, and shame them as, a, as being absolute con artists. But Conan Doyle continued to believe to the end of his life. So uh, he was a very notable figure. He was knighted by King George V. And uh, he knew so much about medicine that uh, obviously that his most famous character, uh, Sherlock Holmes, is, is good friends of a physician, Dr. Watson. If you read about Dr. Watson, he um, uh, works at St. Bartholomew's Hospital in London, which is a real place. And he's, he's served in Afghanistan in that sort of second Afghan war in 1878. What else about the two? Sherlock Holmes is, of course, um, uh, taking opium, which was entirely lawful at the time, as well as meditating by playing the violin, and has uh, such unexampled powers of uh, logical reasoning that he can offer, often solve a case without even leaving the room. The case is afoot. It is an elementary, dear Watson, elementary. But anyway, is it elementary? Is there an afterlife? Can one soul speak? Are these just cold readings? Are they, are they conning us? But come here, they're regular seances and you can find out about the whole idea of spiritualism. Well, this house was owned by a certain Mr. McEwen of the McEwen Brewery. And as you can tell, he was a very affluent man. He donated loads of money to Edinburgh University, partly because the undergraduates spent a lot of money on his beer. There's McEwen Hall, which is named in his honor. So um, anyway, that's why he had this very desirable townhouse. And it's in the shadow of St. Mary's Cathedral the Episcopalian Cathedral. That's to say the church here, which is in full communion with the Church of England. The Episcopalian Church is not the established church here, okay? That's the Church of Scotland. The Episcopalian Church has bishops and archbishops, as in Episcopus, bishop in uh, ancient Greek. Um, so uh, Conan Doyle didn't particularly identify with Catholicism later in life. He spent most of his life in England. He died there, I believe he's buried there. So um, that is Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Come to the Conan Doyle Centre. You can hire out during the festival for comedy sessions and things like that. So look up, look up this skylight here, like the sky. Oh, well, that's the sky. Ooh, and they sort of painted it with stars around. And there's some gorgeous paintings in one of the ground floor rooms. I wish it was brighter. You can see the sort of star-like effect there. Onto the ether. <laughs> Onto eternity. So you ought to pick up a newsletter if you want to know what's going on here, what's on at the Arthur Conan Doyle Center, and uh, can you be in contact with your, your loved ones who've passed on? I don't believe it myself. Are they just cold, cold readings? As in looking at the person, I can tell them something about you, hazard a guess, I'm getting these signals that are very strong, and asking the, the mark to tell you, am I on the right path, am I on the wrong path? Things like that. Ooh, I picture a man and he's clutching his chest. Oh, oh well, then, my grandfather died of a heart attack. Heart attack is one of the most common causes of death, and blah, blah, blah. 
Um, anyway, so that is uh, the Arthur Conan Doyle Center, um, and uh, which previously belonged to McEwen, the brewer, who was elected to Parliament as a Conservative. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was also a Conservative, stood for Parliament, but uh, was not returned, actually. Um, so anything else about that? Well, in the, the, the um, Sherlock Holmes novels, there's no deerstalker cap, there's no billhook pipe or Inverness cape. These are all invented by the American actor Basil Rathbone, who made them sine qua non of the role in the 1920s on stage, partly because he could speak with a billhook pipe in his mouth. Uh, and now they're just considered absolutely de rigueur in relation to this role, instantly identifiable as, as a Sherlock Holmes character. Sherlock Holmes, mysterious, this, um, we don't know much about his background, one brother, Mycroft, um, a confirmed bachelor, like his friend, dear Watson, with a bushy moustache. Was there some uh, um, uh, mm, Ganymede activity going on between them? Just possibly. All right, I'll switch it off now. So please subscribe. I really need you to subscribe. Thank you so much for subscribing. Book lessons with me in English as a foreign language, English literature, history, linguistics, geography, religious studies, politics, French, law, and get me to help with your dissertation, thesis, essay, uh, help you with elocution, interview preparation, debating, and so forth, and book me as your tour guide in London. Thank you for so much for those uh, liberal donations on PayPal and Patreon, not in the political sense, liberal. Toodaloo.